Hi folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on Fat Burning Man, where we talk about real food and real results. Today we have a special throwback episode with my good friend, best-selling paleo author and CrossFit beast, Mr. George Bryant. On this show, you're going to learn, among other things, how to become a better cook. A bit of news before we get there, I'm going to be starring with Sean T and other nutrition and fitness experts on ABC in prime time on a new show. Stay tuned for details. It's super exciting. You can always stay up to date, get all the latest news and details about the show at fatburningman.com. Just enter your email address. We'll fix you right up. Now, before we get to the show, here's the review of the week. This one's from Tony. I stumbled on this podcast and it has changed my life. I've lost 73 pounds and more importantly, I'm off all of my meds. I'd been on blood pressure and statins for 20 years. I am learning more about nutrition every day and this is the best out there. Tony, 73 pounds is no joke. Congratulations. I love that you're getting results from this show, just listening to it. That's why I put it out there so people like you can change their lives because it's one thing just to know about eating real food and what to do from a nutrition and fitness perspective. It's another whole thing entirely to put it into action. So tip of the hat to you. Now, if you have your own success story, please leave a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or anywhere you might be listening to this, or you can always drop me a line at fatburningman.com. Now, I have to ask you something. Are you listening to this show on a smartphone or a tablet? Whether you've got an Apple or an Android, we've got something awesome for you, and it costs less than a cup of coffee. George Bryant and I partnered to create the wildly popular number one food app, Caveman Feast. Our app is available for both iOS and Android right now, so check it out if you haven't already. Just type in Caveman Feast. Thanks to you, Caveman Feast became the number one food app in 10 countries across the world with more than 1,200 five-star reviews. So I think you'll like it too. Inside Caveman Feast, our grain-free goodies will keep your cravings at bay. You get all the flavor without the guilt. The app features over 200 paleo recipes, including sweet caveman pie and honey mustard burgers, crock pot pulled pork, it's the best, and honey baked ham with sliced apples and peaches, garlic shrimp scampi and macadamia nut mahi-mahi, caveman crunch bars for when you're on the go, and pumpkin pancakes, grilled spiced peaches and sweet potato pasta, beastie barbecue sauce and easy grilled guacamole, blueberry banana brownies and chocolate avocado cake, and much more. You can also switch between metric and U.S. units, which is super useful if you're following Fat Burning Man internationally, and I know so many of you are. So as someone who's lucky enough to know George personally and eat his food often, I can tell you that these recipes are some of the absolute best in the world of paleo. So if you have an iPad or iPhone, just type in Caveman Feast into the search bar in the App Store. You'll see our app Caveman Feast pop up under Fat Burning Man. Just grab it there. Now, if you have an Android, type in Caveman Feast into the Google Play Store and you'll see it there too. Once again, just type in Caveman Feast to get our number one best-selling app with more than 200 plus paleo recipes for less than three bucks. You'll never be without kick butt fat burning food again. All right, onto the show with George. On this week's show, George takes us behind the scenes to find out what it really takes to create a world-class cookbook. You'll learn why real food and good health are still the best ways to connect with your friends and family, the one simple trick that will give you the secret to mastering any recipe, why love, passion, and trust are the most important ingredients in any kitchen, and much more. All right, let's go hang out with George. All right, folks, we are back with my good friend, Mr. George Bryant, and he's a soon-to-be New York Times best-selling author. Of course, he's the uh, evil genius behind Caveman Feast and uh, and so many other awesome projects. George, it's a pleasure to have you here. How you doing, buddy? Oh, it's so good to be back. Awesome. You are looking, the people who uh, are on audio, unfortunately, can't see your awesome new haircut and the fact that you've totally cleaned up your act. But I, I can assure you guys who are just listening, he has. It's awesome. I took the jacket off for the interview. You know, I figured I, I looked dapper, but I got to still be approachable. <laughs> I'm the guy that eats bacon and cooks all the time. So I got to at least look the part. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you've been busy. You, um, you're, how, how many pages is your new book? Did you say? Uh, it's 336 pages. Uh, 125 of them are all recipes with full page color photographs and everything is brand new. There's not one repeat. It's not on a website, not on a blog. It is all brand new that we made for the book. Awesome. So, um, and it, I haven't had her on the show yet. I've been trying to get her on the show, but Julie of Paleo MG is uh, obviously your your co-author and partner on this project. Tell us a little bit about her her work uh, and why you guys decided to to partner up because I think it's so cool. Yeah, I'd love to. Julie is absolutely like an amazing human being. She's an unstoppable force in this community. That's and true. Her energy and just what she brings to this world is infectious and people gravitate towards it and it, it really just comes from our heart. You know, I got really the opportunity creating this cookbook with her to really get to know her on a really deep cellular level and like where she comes from in this world. And and she is just genuinely one of the most amazing people that I've ever met, just loaded with positivity and really wants to share that with people. Yeah. And uh, how we met, this is in the book and it's funny because I got to read it after we wrote it and it gets even funnier, but <laughs> We both started our blogs at the same time, you know, and we oh, followed really? each other. Yeah, we followed each other online and we were huh. making each other's recipes and we would just email back and forth. And I remember the first exchange was like, hey, it would be so awesome if you put a link to my website on your website. Yeah. She's like, yeah, let's do it. You know, we like exchanged links and that's what started. And then um, the first time we actually met was at your house. We was that never- the first time? You're kidding yeah, me. We had, we had never met. Dude, that's crazy. So we decided to do a cooking demo together at Paleo, at Paleo FX, and we had never met before. So the first time we met was at your front door, That's and wild. then we had a cooking de- demo together the next day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we started the cooking demo, and obviously, like our energy was great. We fed off each other. The dynamic was perfect. Yeah, yeah. We built each other up, and people you guys were laughing. Are awesome together. We got to laugh at ourselves, laugh with other people. You know, really just get to be ourselves, and that energy was just perfect. So. Um, you know, after a lot of thought and conversations there, I said, you know, it would be awesome if we just did a book together. Like, why not? Yeah. You know, like we get to bring our styles and we both love desserts. We both like having fun. We want people to really enjoy cooking. So why not just write it together and sure. really like combine the best of the both worlds? So, yeah. oh, and because I'm like Space Cadet, uh, Julie Bauer from PaleoOMG.com <laughs> because I feel like I overlooked that part of the question. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you can find her at Paleo OMG everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, yeah. her website. She's absolutely hilarious. If you read anything she writes, you will spit your coffee out or water or whatever it is. So be prepared. All right. So why do we need another cookbook, though? Ah, yeah, that's that's the million dollar question. <laughs> because it's ours. Yeah, I'll be authentic with that one. Um, but no, honestly, this isn't just a cookbook for me or for for Julie as well. Mm-hmm. We've talked about this a lot and I think one of the things is is there's so many people that are out there that are just making another cookbook. Yeah. And yeah. for us, this was really an expression of our journey and on our lessons and really the beliefs that we've established around eating this kind of lifestyle and what it's taken to get us where we are and mm-hmm. we get to share that with people to really kickstart their journey and save them three years or four years or however many years it is of really trying to get clear on what they want. Yeah. We don't we don't have this template of you have to eat this for 21 days or this for 30 days. We have this, hey, honestly, the most important thing for us is that you smile, that you walk in the kitchen and the first thing you do is you glow. And we created recipes that are really, really simple, not intimidating, but delicious that will knock your socks off and change your life. And the whole thing before it in the front of the book, we have cooking tips, how to prepare your kitchen for paleo, how to make cooking fun. Um, I think we have recommended music to play while you dance around your kitchen. Dude, that's great. Like like we kind of went with every bit of it, but all we did was look at what we were doing when we were creating the book. And you know, there's there's jokes in there, like Julie would mess up the kitchen and I would sweep behind and try and do the dishes to keep it clean. (laughs) And then Julie would, Julie would be behind me and every time I open a cabinet, I leave the door open. Yeah. So she'd follow me and close cabinet doors all day. Jeez. You know, but the thing is, is those, that mindset that we were in and really just being excited and happy about sharing our passion got to come through in the food and the recipes we created, we never would have thought of together ever, yeah. I mean, uh, separately, but together we just created like these masterpieces and they're simple and they're amazing. And to me, honestly, not gonna cry, gonna work on this one. 
authentically. This will be the first show you haven't cried on, I think, listen, if you manage to get that yeah, whole way through. We know, we know for all you listeners that have heard me before, I know you're expecting tears from George. <laughs> They're probably going to come anyways, and I'm okay. They'll be happy tears. Um, okay. The book, I've never poured my heart into anything so much in my life. Yeah. From every photograph to every recipe to every dish that was done to every thought that went into it to every page that was written. Um, it's really a true labor of love and having Julie there was just a huge support and we get to collectively come together and create this amazing thing and you know I mean I took over 14,000 photographs for the book are you kidding me yeah jeez so for people that know photography especially food photography one recipe that perfect photo that you see on the page that we decided to pick had 290 to 600 other ones that had to be edited and looked at and compared and contrasted and one crumb moved or one anything right, moved, right. you know, just because I wanted it to be as beautiful as possible for people. And I'm really just excited to to hold it and to feel it and see it and have other people like get that experience in their hands and get the pages dirty. And yeah. I get to know that people are in their kitchen with love and their fingers are dirty and they're marking the pages with a memory of creating cookies that they share with their mother or their father or their sister or their wife or their husband. And we get to share that and our love and our passion for food with those people and create everlasting memories in their life. Yeah. George, I think that's such a, a great point. And one thing that we should, um, I, w- I would love to bring more out of, and I know that you share is that home cooking is more than, uh, than what most people are used to experiencing with food. It's like food isn't meant to be a burrito wrapped in aluminum, right? It's not meant to be a hamburger or anything that you're just kind of like shoving down or a protein bar or whatever. It, it's it's uh, at the heart of what it means to be human and to, to share with other people, to provide uh, for other people, to be vulnerable with other people at dinner while you're just kind of relaxing and, and consuming food. Can you talk a little bit about the how you think about food now um, compared to the way you might have thought about it as a Marine, say? <laughs> yeah. I, um, I think this is the deepest we've gotten with this question, and, and we talk about this question. I think I have to time. make you cry, so. Yeah, I know. I, I felt <laughs> that. You started dropping bur- words that were, were tear-inducing for me. But, um, you know, what I love about this is that every time we speak in our relationship and connection, we get to peel back another onion in mm-hmm. that layer. And... I think food itself is indicative of that as well. And and it's almost like a metaphor for life. You know, I I invite people. So, and I'm going to share my experience. And and for those that know me, I talk a lot and I love it and you get to listen. So I'll probably be singing happy and let it go in a couple minutes. (laughs) I'm a frozen fan. Um, I'll settle for that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, just let it go. You know, there we go. Um, and uh, with food, what I've realized, though, is as, as Abel spoke, uh, I was an active duty Marine for 12 years of my life. And everything was just go, 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 go on the run, whether it was in Afghanistan or in the field or just my normal day. It was never really healthy, grounded, connected, really, really taking care of my body. And there's so many ways that we get to go with this question. So yeah. I'm going to pick the one that's most important for me. Yeah. And it comes down to self-love and really being connected with yourself. And a lot of people may not realize this, but this is my experience, is that when you don't take the time to take care of yourself, and that starts with nourishing yourself and giving yourself the fuel, that is literally a sliver of where else it shows up in your life. Because truly, if you can't be connected and grounded and loving and surrendered to yourself, you can't be that with anybody else. And it affects every single thing in your life. And like I said, food can just be a catalyst for it. Mm. But the experience of food and what we get to create now is we get to create this almost self-love vessel thing where you just get to really take a moment and express to yourself how much you really care. Like, body, I love you so much. I'm going to make you a delicious, nourishing, fulfilling meal that tastes good, makes you feel good, and is extending the longevity of your physical form because I love you. Right. And when you get to get grounded in that, and then you get to share that with other people, like when you look at food past being food to go in your mouth, when I get to come to your house and cook you and Alice and dinner, I get to look at everything I create that you trust me and surrender to me enough that you know that no matter what I do, I'm giving my all to that food and right. you're going to eat it. And that is the ultimate surrender connection and love and passion and trust when it comes to a relationship. Yeah. And it's funny because people may just think it's food, but it's the whole act of it and creating 
community and family and you know 60 years ago people used to come home from work and they'd sit down at a dinner table and they'd have a dinner and they'd right. ask about their day and they'd be, how was your day how was this how can we make this better what'd you do and then now we come home and we're at a dinner table and there's four cell phones at the table yeah. are you kidding me right. like no like i'm gonna start dropping people's phones and glasses of water <laughs> oops my bad you know like god forbid that you be connected with people so and, how do you yeah but how do you go from i think we're raised in a lot of ways to say this needs to be quick and easy we need to get in and out of the kitchen as quick as possible uh cooking is a chore compared to what what you learn through experience, um, what a lot of us, you know, kind of skipped a generation is yeah. that, uh, man, when you, when you cook for someone and they eat your food or when you cook with someone, uh, what a massively different experience. It's not like you need to be in the kitchen for, for 10 minutes to cook something. It doesn't matter how long you're in the kitchen. This is like being in the kitchen. The act of cooking for people is your indulgence. That's the reward, right? It's, it's the time that you get to, uh, just explore what it means to create food for other people. It's a very, very primal thing. Yeah. It's a, uh, to me, I like to look at it like it's the true definition of unconditional love. Yeah. Because you really get to be disattached from the outcome. Right. You just get to put your all and pour your heart into that food. And then you get to witness on the other side and you get nothing in return. And that really is the true act of human connection and love and really taking someone to their highest possibility and surrendering and supporting that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, like, like I said, we could do a 17 hour show on this one and self love and, and food. But what I think the most important thing is, is, is a lot of people we hear it all the time is time. It's, yeah. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. And I invite you that if you don't make time, your life is going to pass you by. Right. Life matters moment to moment. It's urgent. No one's going to take a stand for your life before you do. And I will tell you that, if we were to videotape you for 24 hours and you got to objectively look at your life and what you do, there's more time than you ever thought possible to create those connections and those relationships with food and with people and with those things that are going to build you up and support you in being your highest self and loving yeah. and, and things like that. And I invite you to, to really carve that time out, whether it's baking with your child for 15 minutes or cooking a meal and sitting down. And even if you only eat for 20 minutes, just saying, hey, one time a week, yeah. I want to make a dinner and I want to sit down and I want to share what happened in my day. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. it's one time, but we just get to create those positive anchors and those things that associate cooking with happiness and really just being joyful. And then you start looking at food as this almost medicine for your soul. Yeah. And then you want to invite people into it and you start building a community and it's like, okay, you get to start with your family. You get to have a family dinner. You guys get to talk about your day. You get to share the good, the bad, your experiences, whatever it is but you get connected and then yeah. you're like, wow, you go lay down in bed. You're like, oh, we've never talked about that before. That was amazing. I right. want to do it again. Yeah. And then you get to do it again and you get to do it again. And then you get to bring other people in that. And that's where the, the primal community gets to come in. And that's where you get to really build that human connection. Because then when you go out to dinner with someone or when you go to a friend's house for dinner, you're connected because you know what's going to come and you want, you get to create with people. And that's yeah. really what life is about is, connecting with human beings and showing compassion and love and really just being present and it's the most amazing feeling in the world and i'm i'm like all hypothetical caveman <laughs> philosopher guy right now but it's it, it it really is true and it doesn't end up coming back to food it's just yeah it the food is the mechanism but that mechanism also serves our body so when there's love going into it you get to nourish your body with that and you get to be an example of how you can love and take care of yourself and you don't have to tell people to do it. You don't have to right, tell them right. what they need to do, what they don't need to do. You just get to be it and they get to witness it firsthand and your love and your passion yeah. and the results that you've created get to come through and everything that's infectious. Yeah. Well, and it's been so cool for me to see also what cooking can do to uh, to people because we all kind of started around the same time. I remember at the first Paleo FX hanging out with Dave Asprey with his silly glasses and no one knew who he was. No one knew who I was. I think my podcast that like I just launched it. I was getting like 200 downloads uh, a week or something like that. And uh, and you were kind of just getting started. And Julie was there and seeing what's happened and Bill and Haley as well. I mean, like seeing what's happened um, to their lives, to, to all of our lives has been powerful, powerful stuff. But even just like your personality now, compared to the man I met and, and hung out with at the first Paleo Effects, is massively different. And I think it's really cooking. It's providing that food 
for other people, provide, providing that uh, it is more than food, right? But like providing that to other people has like literally changed your personality in, in a massively awesome way. It's changed my being like my, you know, like, all right, here you go. Um, I spent 12 years of my life in a position where I truly thought I was making the ultimate sacrifice and serving others. Yeah. You know, I got to get to the bottom of those beliefs and realize that I was just running from being a scared little boy and it was amazing. And I will never discredit my service in the Marine Corps. Like that is responsible for a lot. I got to touch a lot of lives. I got to make a difference. I deployed, I did my thing. And, and I get experiences that have mold me and, and have shaped me to really connect with people on a different level. But it wasn't until I started this. And um, and you get that like first email from someone that you've never met, you've never heard from, and they get to write you and they say, hey, you know what you think was a brownie was the window that I needed to save my life. Right. And you can't put, you can't put a measure on that. You can't put any value on that. It's not a dollar sign. It's not a recipe. It's, it's the ability to stand for a higher cause in humanity and really show love and compassion. And I get to do that in food. And it's, it's really crazy. Cause if I said this to myself three years ago, I'd be like, whatever. <laughs> you didn't even cook. For those of you who don't know, George didn't even cook three years ago. No, I didn't. And just the symbolism and the, the way that it's gone about now, like I get the privilege because it is a privilege to interact with all these people on a daily basis and touch and change their lives. And I get to share in their visions and their journeys and their life. And I know I've gotten some experience with people that are really sick that have passed away since they've emailed me, that have had cancer and terminal diseases and families. Yeah, and, me too. And I get to be in that with them. And it's really selfless and it's really rewarding and it's what it's all about. You know, the world is not about I, it's about me and team. And we're collectively a team of amazing human beings that have the ability to love and be compassionate and really make a difference and affect critical mass in this world. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we don't have to come from a place of, of anger or hate or resentment or fear. We get to come from a place of love. And for me, food has been that door to get me in to really get in that with people. And it started with you. And for those that you don't know, this is when I get to take the stage and say, Abel got to take a stand for me two years ago and Abel changed my life. And Abel in that position was exactly what I needed at that time because he was clear. And he put it out there and you didn't care if I rejected him or got mad or got angry, but he didn't accept anything less. And he really got to stand for me and higher humanity. And I've looked up to you for a long time and I appreciate you and I can never put my gratitude into words. I can only pay it forward and let us continue to do this. So with everybody that you can't cut this out of the interview, which is why I put it in the middle of my question, I get to say thank you and put you on the spot and say thank you for taking a stand for me and not only making a difference in my life, but in everybody else's life. Thank because you, Josh. You're, making, you're making me tear up now. My I understand the tireless sacrifice that goes into it. And I understand what we can collectively all do together when we put others before ourselves. And I will always be supportive of anything that comes with that. And yes, we get to do it with food. And then you do it with your amazing radio voice and all the amazing listeners that you have get to be a part of that. And I'm just honored to share. Thanks. Thank you, George. I, I, food, uh, I mean, this whole thing is obviously uh, bigger than nutrition or or food or meals or fitness or whatever. It, it cannot for a lot of people, it starts there, but you know, as well as anyone, you start getting those emails, you, you talk to people, you meet them in person, people who have followed your blog or whatever, you guys who are listening right now. Uh, and this is very, very cool stuff. You know, like people are connecting. What we need is, uh, you know, there's so much noise in the world. There are so many text messages and emails and jobs to do and, and random errands and being stuck in traffic and whatever. And having that, uh, if, if you can create something, if you can become a person who really cares about 
food and and your health and your family's health and you start focusing a lot of your time looking at cookbooks for for ideas and and maybe taking a little while but eventually getting into the kitchen and starting to cook then it starts taking up you know half an hour of your time every day or a few times a week and then a few hours and then it, then after a while it becomes critical to who you are and all of a sudden it's pushed out all of your baggage, or most of it anyway, and, and, and the rest of the junk that you might have been carrying around until it is who you are. You are, like when you come to a house now, when you come to anyone's house, you are the cook. And people are looking to you uh, for advice and, and direction in the kitchen, and uh, they're cooking with you. And man, it's, it's like music, right? When you yeah. jam with, something, with, with someone, you have this deep connection uh, and it's it's a very similar thing that you can build with food, and if you can, uh, if you can make that a critical part of your life, it will change not only your life but everyone around you. And this is so cool. So I, um, a, a lot of people who are listening probably know who Tucker Max is, um, and he is a really interesting guy. He's here in Austin. Um, we did a panel together at at Paleo FX, but um, he came over for dinner the other night, and and we served him food. And I can tell you that the conversations that happen with people when you when you go through that like uh, that preparation, that art, that experience, you share some wine. I mean, we don't. Uh, it's soul food. We don't get enough of that, and and uh, it's almost impossible to be angry or frustrated or uh, or or bring in negative energy when the food is that good and the people are so psyched about it. You know, it, it just changes everything. You know, it's funny too, and, I, and I, I love that, and I love that, and it ties in perfectly, but the other thing is, is the one thing you'll ever notice is when you have that energy, no matter what you do or make, the food will never taste bad. Yeah. Ever. Ever. Because Unless you not, refrigerate a tomato. <laughs> but it's not about, you know, the food, and I think that's a, a perfect example as to yeah. why we really wrote this book. Mm -hmm. It's about the love and the energy and the confidence that you put into that food. It's the experience that you're creating about it. But everything we do in life is experiential based. Yeah. Every single thing we do. You know, me and you can walk into a room in the same situation. And we're both going to have a different interpretation and experience. Totally. I think food is this really centrally located one and everybody's going to get to have their own interpretation and experience. Mm -hmm. But when it comes from a place of love, you really can just put salt and pepper on something. And it's the act of service. Yeah. And the act of serving yourself and then serving other people that just creates that space. And you're completely right. I can't tell you, you know, how, how amazing it is. Like when I've seen families or you hear about it, you know, that have like, haven't had a family meal together in six years, they fight all the time. But then the second the communion gets broken and everyone starts eating. And if that one person in that house was really dedicated to bringing love to that family and they made this huge feast and everyone sits down, nothing happens but love. And they may finish the meal and go back to whatever it was before. But for that moment and that glimpse, they got an experience of pure love, joy, and connection. And with enough of those, every layer of the onion disappears and you get to create those relationships with everybody in your life, whether they're strangers or friends or families or whatever the case is. And, and that's really, really the point of what we did with the book. It's, you know, I, I was afraid to cook. You know, people know I never cooked before. It's in the book. I wrote about it. You've talked to me about it, but I never cooked. When I went yeah. paleo, I was overcoming a 12-year battle with an eating disorder and weight loss. And it's like, it was the next thing for me to control. And I'm like, how do I do this? You know, and it was really intimidating. Yeah. But then once I realized and I kind of overcame my own beliefs, my limiting beliefs about myself, really, the, and I say this every time, the worst thing that's going to happen is it may not taste great and you never have to make it again, yeah. ever, ever. Like we go through life and we learn these lessons and we get to get our experiences and the universe tests us. So if you make something that doesn't turn out, you just learn exactly what not to do. So literally <laughs> make it again, make it positive and enjoy it and then master it. And then your life just moves forward. And then this is where we're going to get really deep because I got to say this and people listening, they're like, we were talking about a cookbook. Like, Where are these things coming from? Yeah. I love this. But really, where else in life can you use those same principles? Like I like to look at food as a really template for you to succeed anywhere in life. If you go to run your first 5K and your goal is 23 minutes and you come in in 23.30 and you didn't make your goal, you have two options. You can do the same thing over again and go run it again in the same time or you can make a choice to shift mm -hmm. 
the ways of being and your commitment and your dedication and find a way to improve yourself and grow and then you can do it again and do it faster. And you can apply that everywhere in your life. So we don't get to be stuck in a process anymore. We get to grow and inspire and change and be committed to ourselves and committed to other people. And you can do the same thing in the kitchen. And I know it may sound cheesy that if you burn bacon the first time and you don't burn it the second time, that that's going to help you run a marathon. <laughs> but I invite you to that possibility. I'll vouch for that. I will vouch for that very thing. Yeah. And when you come back from your marathon, you can eat a whole cheesecake. So. <laughs> Boom, like create that possibility. I, <laughs> hey, there's a cheesecake recipe in the book. So there. Imagine yeah. that. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so I mean, and, and, and Abel's run many marathons and he's been in lots of training and I've done them as well and done triathlons. And, you know, like we set these expectations and these goals for ourselves. And then a lot of times we get there and we may not meet our goal and then we beat ourselves up. Yeah. And you don't get to do that anymore. Not with me and not with our cookbook and not with our food or our recipes. You don't get to beat yourself up anymore. You get to love yourself. You get to high five yourself and then slap bacon on it if it doesn't taste good yeah. and then make it again. <laughs> but we made every recipe and yeah, maybe I'm passionate just a little bit, <laughs> but we made every recipe in the book as approachable and simple as possible to set you up for success. So you really can make a difference in your life and other people's lives and your friends and your families and really just step into your power in the kitchen and it starts with food. Because I invite you that when you master that, when you get to become a master creator of food and put your energy and love into it, your life at work, your life in your relationships, your life in your goals, whether personal or professional, they're gonna explode. Because you get to put that same creativity and passion and power into it and blow the lid off what you thought possible. And yes, it can start with a macadamia nut chocolate chip cookie, which is in the book. Oh, George, we are, we're almost out of time, but this has been so powerful, so cool. Thank you so much for coming on. Before we go, why don't you tell folks, oh, actually, let's do this. Can you give people uh, one thing they can do right now to, to start on their journey or, or continue their journey on getting to what you've achieved with food, like having that, that relationship with food, what's one thing they can do to kind of like get moving? Yeah. And I want to clarify, we got nothing but time. Yeah. <laughs> that we can create as much as we want. We don't get to Thank you, them. George. Um, but, uh, yeah, besides pre-order, the, besides order the book, you know, just my joking, but no, sure. really, um, book aside, I think the biggest, biggest piece of action for people um, on their journey is to really create a space to where they get to really put themselves first. And that doesn't make you selfish. It doesn't make you self-centered. It doesn't make you arrogant or egotistical. It actually makes you loving, caring, compassionate, vulnerable, surrendered, trusting, honest. And when you get to be in that place with yourself, you get to really genuinely serve others because you get to be responsible for yourself and you're not looking externally for something to come in and that gets you the ability to unconditionally give and yeah. I will, I'll share if, if this computer wasn't so big I'd walk you into my bedroom <laughs> but um, my bathroom mirror has positive affirmations on it that I write every morning nice so when I wake up in the morning I go right I'm beautiful yeah yes me this guy comb you, you are know, beautiful George. Part, you know no beard anymore cleaned <laughs> up but I write I'm beautiful and I write whatever I feel in the morning yeah and if and if I'm not feeling something, I take a I take a second to just really breathe, and it's like, okay, what's that's coming from? That's not true. I get to be whatever I want. So today I get to be sexy. I get to be confident. I get to be beautiful. I get to be energetic. I get to be loving, and I write whatever it is. And I write. I've written some of them over and over, and what I've realized is the ones that I've written over and over are really the essence of who I want to be. Yeah. So now I get to wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and say, you know what? I'm a loving, passionate, and trusting man. And no one can stop that. And when I walk out the door, everybody gets love, passion, and trust from me. And that's what they get all day. And it's infectious. And that simple act of just really shifting your mindset into that place of really being there will change everything that you do. Yeah. And then every time you brush your teeth, you brush your hair, you go to bed, you go to the bathroom, you take a shower, you get to look at it and you get to really feel it. And you get to look at yourself and you know, you know what? I am. You know, I really am that and other people get to experience that. And it's a true gift to this world. Absolutely. Well, George, you are a sexy man. Where can people find you? And and uh -huh. uh, so like make sure you give the full title of your book. We'll yeah, let's make yeah, this a New York Times bestseller. If it isn't already by the time in the future this comes out. <laughs> the most important place to find us is the paleokitchen.com. Boom. Uh, that's where the book is. It, it links to Amazon. 
Um, the book is going to be available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Um, I'm going to create the possibility it'll be in every Costco in the United States. We'll All right. See, let's go with it. Let's make that happen. And anywhere else that books are sold, barnesandnoble.com, everything else. But The Paleo Kitchen is the title of the book, um, thepaleokitchen.com. Uh, Julie and I really poured our hearts into this. And you can find us respectively. Julie's at paleoomg.com. And I'm at civilizedcavemancooking.com. And um, everything kind of links from there. But I'd love to hear from you and talk to you and hear your story and your journey. And really, um, I can't wait to read everybody's thoughts on the book and when I cry when I get it and <laughs> get to look at my baby and hold it and record a video for that I'm sure but awesome. um, yeah really really I just invite everybody to the endless possibility that we get to live in this world of love and creativity and passion and trust and compassion and empathy for others and it and it really gets to start with food yeah and you get to start paying that for it I mean last example I'm gonna run your show forever you don't get to get off of me able like I got way too much energy right now and, but <laughs> My just, computer is going to start beeping at you, I think. That's fine. That's fine. Here's my, here's my favorite thing. And this is what I remember very young. You ever remember when like you were at someone's house or you were at school and someone's mother made like homemade cookies oh, or homemade yeah. brownies yeah. and you got to taste them and you didn't care what they were. Like you knew that someone's mother or father or relative, grandmother put their tried and true love into their favorite recipe and you ate it. And it didn't matter what it was, but it just overcame you with joy and you didn't even have to know them, but you felt yeah. loved by them. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing that I can relate it to that you get to do and you get to be with this book and share with other people. And I know every single human on this planet really wants to connect with people on that level. And this is just a tool and a mechanism to get you there to a way deeper place in your life. Yeah. So make some cookies for your family and friends, everyone. I think that's that's the take home point of today. George, thank you so much for coming on once again. Anyone who liked this interview, please check out the other interviews with George. Uh, and of course, our uh, iPhone and Android app, Caveman Feast, which has just been doing awesome. Um, George, still getting so much feedback from people about that. And we continue to put more stuff in it. And, and I'm really excited about the projects that we have together. And I encourage Everyone, please check out George's new cookbook, The Paleo Kitchen. Um, massive, massively good food. So, George, thank you so much for coming on. We'll chat soon. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. Hey, this is Abel, and I have a quick question for you. Do you want to get in the best shape of your life without giving up your favorite foods? Don't miss your opportunity to get the new Fat Burning Chef e-cookbook featuring more than 200 delicious recipes from the top paleo chefs in the world. You can get it now for a huge discount at fatburningchef.com. You can type it in from any device. Keep on listening for the details. Meet Jane. Jane knows she's supposed to eat right, but it's been one heck of a long day and she's short on time to cook a healthy, delicious dinner. Jane knows she can get lean by choking down reheated chicken breast and steamed broccoli six times a day for the next three months, but that doesn't sound like very much fun. Fortunately, Jane's in luck because her friend just sent her a collection of over 150 quick and easy recipes that just so happen to keep the pounds off. It's called the Fat Burning Chef. And through the magic of the interwebs, this handy, interactive, digital cookbook beams straight to you instantly. And since it lives on your iPhone, iPad, Droid, computer, or other gizmo, you'll never be without quick and easy fat-burning meals. But it's not just about mouth-watering recipes. We want to change the world with real food. When you grab the Fat-Burning Chef, you get another copy as a free gift to share with your friends and family. So if you're short on time and want to know what's for dinner tonight, head on over to fatburningchef.com and we'll fix you right up. Bon appetit, Jane. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Fat Burning Man. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the podcast app, or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. Got a second? Please leave me a quick review on iTunes. I always love hearing from you. And if you think someone else might like and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or with a family member. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at FatBurnMan and Facebook by typing in Abel James or FatBurningMan. Drop me a line anytime. 
Did you know that I've recorded over 150 episodes of Fat Burning Man, winning four awards in independent media and hitting number one in more than eight countries? And here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode for free. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. I'll give you a second to type it in, fatburningman.com. And you'll get all the show notes and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of Fat Burning Man. Better yet, enter your best email at fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide to start burning fat right now and a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free fat burning download straight to your inbox and make sure that you never miss a show again. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week. I don't know why anyone would embark on a major lifestyle change without at least someone to check in with. Who knows what they're doing? You know, just a little bit of coaching. And I'm not saying you have to like take a second mortgage on your home to hire coaching, right? What I'm saying is that there may be someone that you can.